Brooklyn declined a trade offer from Boston to receive Jalen Brown as a part of a deal in exchange for Kevin Durant. Brad Stevens has been an amazing GM in his first year with the Celtics, but fans in Boston are currently asking themselves if their team's former head coach doesn't remember what happened back in the first round of 2022's NBA playoffs. Lest we forget, the Seas took four straight wins from KD's Nets, handing Kevin and Kyrie a clean sweep. This video breaks down the full trade offered up by the Celtics, you'll see why the Brooklyn Nets declined it, and the confusing logic from a seemingly solid general manager to initiate the deal in the first place. Before continuing, according to YouTube's analytics, only 15% of you watching right now are subscribed, so press the sub box for more content like this every single day if you haven't already. Help this video and YouTube's algorithm by leaving a like, and make sure you're following me on Instagram at dflowhoops. I can't thank you enough for any bit of support. Now into the content. You can thank the Minnesota Timberwolves for giving up four future first-round picks in exchange for Rudy Gobert, and also Kevin Durant's trade request for stalling the market and making the 2022 NBA offseason fairly uneventful up to this point. The Gobert trade raised the standards for what Brooklyn wanted in return for a much better player in KD, which is why we've yet to see Nets GM Sean Marks accept a deal. Now, the Boston Celtics front office has placed themselves in an awkward situation after The Athletic reported yesterday that Brad Stevens offered up Jalen Brown, Derek White, and Picks in a deal which would have netted them Kevin Durant, but the Nets turned it down. I want to start by saying that Brad Stevens deserves a lot of credit for what he's done since becoming general manager, whether it was trading Kemba Walker in exchange for Al Horford, which made the godfather a Celtic for the second time in his career, or signing a coach who perfectly fit the team's hard-nosed culture in Ime Udoka, then trading for crucial extra ball handling by acquiring Derek White, Boston getting two W's away from throwing a championship parade down Causeway Street is in large part due to the retooling of Brad Stevens in the post-Danny Ainge era. The flawless reputation from Brad continued into the summer, where he selected a player I called the steal of the draft right off the bat in J.D. Davison down at pick number 53, and Davison lived up to that hype I gave him, as Davison posted 28 points in one outing, which was more than his college career high of 20 points, and JD also led the summer league in assists per game. In his first five pro outings, Davison logged 30 minutes per night, averaged a stat-stuffing 13 points, 8.2 dimes, 4.8 rebounds, 1.2 steals, and 1.2 blocks per game. Resembling a legit rotation piece, Davison also took three triples per night, and knocked down a lethal 47% of those deep-range attempts down in Vegas. Two other amazing moves recently for Celts GM Stevens was signing the bench scoring he sought out for when the offseason began by acquiring Malcolm Brogdon and Danilo Gallinari, who you can watch a breakdown on in this video right here. With all that said, Stevens came extremely close to potentially making his first mistake as a general manager when he offered up a player who I've consistently called the most talented second option in basketball in exchange for Kevin Durant. Brown struggled with his handle at times throughout the 2022 playoffs. That's going to happen as an improving player. We can't forget he's only about to turn 26 years of age. Having said that, I would think the fact that he did a great job at defending Kevin Durant in the first round plus averaged 23.1 points per game throughout the entire playoffs on a very solid 47-37-76 shooting split for the Eastern Conference champions would make him untouchable for Kevin Durant. In terms of the other side of the court defensively, did my man Brad Stevens forget that Brown had the second best rating on this end of the floor at his position in 2022? Regardless, he almost definitely forgot that the soon-to-be 34-year-old Kevin Durant ranked well below the much older LeBron James and even behind Duncan Robinson as the 11th most valuable defender at the small forward spot. Brown's ability to cover ground with his 7-foot wingspan combined with his anticipation, lateral quickness, and hustle make him one of, if not the most bothersome wing defender across the entire NBA. Dealing that type of talent along with another crucial role player in Derek White along with picks seems blasphemous to me that Brad Stevens offered that up. It was one playoff run, which maybe Durant can bounce back from, but over the four games in which he and Kyrie's nets were swept, while he averaged 26.3 points per night, four more points than the series average for Jalen Brown, Kevin shot a measly 38.3% from the fields 
and 33.3% on 5.3 triples per night. I'm not hating, I'm just comparing him to JB's numbers, so I was shocked when I saw that Brown, who at his best is an up-and-coming hybrid of LeBron and Kawhi, was given up on. But as awkward as this seems for Boston, given they're left with a Jalen Brown who just tweeted out SMH in response to this news, some of the best trades are the ones that never happen. My Toronto Raptors almost traded Kyle Lowry to the Knicks in 2013 in an effort to rebuild, directly before Lowry helped end the team's five-year playoff drought and lead the six to seven straight playoff appearances, which included an NBA championship. Best thing that Boston can do in my book is run it back, especially with the upgraded pieces that have been acquired by Brad through the draft and free agency. While the Jays have each made at least three trips to the Eastern Conference Finals throughout their young careers, getting as close as they did to the chip in 2022 will give these two up-and-comers invaluable experience. I expect these two to cherish that experience and use it as motivation in both their off-season workouts, the 2022-23 season, and of course next year's playoffs, which I'm sure Celtic fans just want to press the skip button to. Boston can't start the way they did in 2021-22's campaign and expect to miraculously reverse their fortunes in rare fashion like they just did. That means the consistent leadership from Brown and Tatum will have to take a big leap. But as LeBron James said about Jason Tatum recently, JT losing to the powerhouse Golden State Warriors in 2022 was fairly similar to James himself losing to the powerhouse San Antonio Spurs back in 2007. Overall, the Celtics got lucky that Brooklyn turned this trade down and demanded more for Durant. The Nets' greediness could end up costing them because with a division rival they were just swept by in the Celtics, but more specifically Jalen Brown gaining motivation from Brooklyn denying his services, and also his own GM being willing to trade him, we now could see Brown develop into a whole different animal in the 2022-23 campaign. Let's be fair to Jalen, he was doing pool workouts with weights in his hands even before all this went down, and regardless of what happens, Brown's work ethic stays consistent. Who took the bigger L here though, Brad Stevens or Sean Marks? Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shout out, and the top 5 commenters with the most shout outs by September 21st earn free NBA merchandise of their choosing, so compete in Community Speaks by leaving your take on the question. Yesterday I asked what will it take for the Clippers to win the title, Kent Saludo earns the shout out for saying, it all comes down to the health and chemistry for the Clippers. They have undeniable star talent and respectable depth within their team, but the issue is always about the injuries. PG-13 and Kawhi dealt with injury issues these past few seasons, and it seems they can't stay healthy for a whole year. Their biggest addition is John Wall, whose career got derailed by injuries as well. Lastly, this will be the first time they'll be playing, and if they can't all be healthy and play a lot of minutes on the floor together, then the chemistry will be a problem come the playoffs. It's not always about who has the best talent. Instead, it's the best team who plays well together 